Hey, it's me, Nalthazar, and welcome to another Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the first of the new Kamigawa Neon Dynasty cards that I got that really sort of just caught my eye. So, let's get into it. Now, really quickly to um, to start this off, I uh, I got the COVIDs somehow. So I am stuck in quarantine in my room. I am attempting to record using my laptop. Uh, it does not really work very well. It sort of just shuts itself off randomly every 30 seconds to 10 minutes. So uh, this might be a little bit more fragmented than usual, but I'm doing my best. So uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of reasons why I haven't been able to record lately, but uh, the first and foremost was getting sick, it wasn't COVID, and then a few days later, getting sick again, and then that time it was COVID. But I don't even leave my house, so I... I don't know. Anywho, so my luck with the Neon Dynasty packs was so-so. Like, it wasn't great, it wasn't terrible. Uh, and then my VIP got bugged, so it took me a little bit to be able to get some VIP cards. So I really didn't have a whole lot of the set at the beginning. Uh, and I really actually don't have a whole lot of the set right now either. Uh, but I wound up pulling a Ganjo Uprising in one of my early boosters. And when I first looked at this card, I really didn't think I would find any use for it. But then I had just a sudden stroke of inspiration to try out, and I found that I actually really love this card. Uh, it's, it's definitely more of like a training grounds monster than it is uh, a card that you're going to use in any kind of event, but uh, you can definitely do some really fun stuff with this. So this is a seven mana spell, and when you cast it, you're going to create X samurai tokens. Those tokens gain haste and menace until end of turn. Then your opponent is going to create X minus one samurai tokens, where X is this card's stored mana. So this thing can store up to 10 mana, meaning that it's going to create up to 10 samurai tokens for you and nine samurai tokens for your opponent. And those samurai tokens, if it will let me, are two twos, meaning that you're for 17 mana, you're getting a 20, 20. Now, granted, you're giving your opponent a 19, oh, sorry, an 18, 18, uh, which is not exactly a good thing but there are definitely ways around that that will make it so that you can do some giggles with this card. So the first thing that I thought of with this card was, well, what happens if we just play something that takes the Samurai tokens that we play on our opponent's side and just give them back to us and all your Samurai are belong to us? And that's exactly what I did. So there's a new card in the Neon Dynasty set called Invoke the Winds. It's a 15 mana spell that says gain control of target opposing creature. Uh, that creature gains vigilance until the beginning of your next turn. So you can play this in conjunction with the Samurai to get all 19 Samurai tokens, which means that now all of a sudden uh, you're getting 38 Samurai worth of power on the board. Although for some reason, I think that it was giving me 40. I think it was even like giving my opponent the full stack and me the full stack, or maybe it was giving me 11 and then my opponent was getting nine. Either way, I'm pretty sure that I was getting, we'll see in the video footage, but yeah. Uh, so Invoke the Winds was one way of doing it. Another way was Mind Flayer. So I decided just to sort of like throw all of this into one deck <clears throat> and just try and play off of it from there. So Mind Flayer says, when this creature enters the battlefield, if you control two or less creatures, gain control of target opposing creature. So uh, something interesting to note about uh, stealing these Aganjo Uprising tokens is that if you steal them until end of turn with something like Willbreaker or Dak Thaden or uh, something like that, it actually puts them in a separate creature stack. Sorry, it's kind of hard to talk sometimes. The, the COVID is kicking my butt. Uh, it puts them in a separate creature stack. So you don't actually get them in the same stack because it's ultimately going to be giving them back to your opponent. So you have to permanently steal the tokens from your opponent in order for them to all join the same stack. So keep that in mind. Now, the other thing that I really wanted to try with this was, well, what happens if we change the base power toughness of these tokens? And so I really wanted to play with this new vehicle, Mindlink Mech. So Mindlink Mech uh, is a new artifact vehicle. It has way more text than we're going to want to read. 
Uh, but the text that is of importance is the middle text that says creatures with pilot have base power toughness of 4-3. And so when this thing enters the battlefield, uh, you're going to give a creature pilot. So what you do is you play your Aegonjo Uprising, and then you're going to steal your tokens back somehow, be it Invoke the Winds or Mind Flayer or whatever. Uh, you're going to play a Mind Link mech, and you're going to give those Samurai tokens 4-3 base toughness, power toughness, instead of 2-2. Um, two, two. And then all of a sudden, you're going to be swinging for 80 haste. Uh, and 80 haste is enough to put a big chunk out of pretty much anything. So the rest of my deck was me just messing around with different cards. Uh, it's definitely suboptimal. You're going to want to run Salundi Visions over Seagate Restoration, because uh, that's going to let you fetch your cards that you want and fetching the cards that you want is always going to be a big win, be it either the Aegonjo Uprising or Invoke the Winds. Uh, you do want to make sure that you're playing this with either white, blue, or red, blue. You'll see that Aegonjo Uprising is white and red, so you're going to want to play it with one of those two colors. I think that the best way to do it is with Rawl, because Rawl's first ability is absolutely phenomenal for picking out combo pieces that you need, and this is absolutely a combo deck. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much how it works. Now, uh, if you don't have the Mind Link mech, there are a few other options in Standard that we have that will change the base power toughness of your tokens. Uh, so one of those is Tanazir. You can do this with Tanazir, and Tanazir will obviously be stronger than the mech uh, because it's going to turn the tokens into 7-7s seven or potentially even larger than that instead of 1-1, one, one, or sorry, 2-2s. Two so uh, that definitely works. Downside to Tanazir is that Tanazir costs 21 mana. So it's a little bit harder to get this one out. And then if you're running red, uh, you can also run um, the Puppeteer. So Creepy Puppeteer is going to fill the same role. It's uh, 13 mana, and it's going to make it so that target creatures' base power toughness becomes 4-3. So you can actually do this one a little bit easier than with the new vehicle. I have a separate video for the vehicle on its own, uh, but I just wanted to mess around with new cards. So these are other options that you can do. Uh, to pair with the Aegonjo Uprising and, and make it functional. So let's go ahead and check out the gameplay. I wound up playing against like some random scrub, I think. I don't know. We'll see. It was fun. Let's check it out. So I'm up against this Gauze Master. Maybe I should tell Gauze that he has a master somewhere. I don't know. I don't know if he'd like that, but whatever. Anywho. Uh, so I I start out with both the Aegonjo Uprising and the Mind Link Mech in my hand, which is pretty great. I definitely want to have both of those in my starting hand. Uh, and I've got a Hall of the Storm Giants, which is going to be good because uh, it's going to give me gem conversion. So getting gem conversion is pretty much always a win. And then uh, you'll see on the bottom of the board, I have, uh, I have a bunch of different options. I could have either gone for um, the loyalty into blue, or I could have just sort of taken the, the bigger match. So... Uh, my third draw here is Invoke the Winds, and so at this stage, I've got all three of my combo pieces really early on, which is great. I'm sitting pretty here. Uh, so now all I need to do is get the mana to be able to use them. So uh, my opponent's getting some pretty crazy cascades. So, I mean, that sort of just sort of comes with the territory, right? Like you're going to run into that from time to time. So not the worst thing ever. I'm going to pop my first ability here. Uh, and I'm actually going to go ahead and take uh, the Otawara Soaring City just so that I can get a little bit more gem conversion. So I could hold on to it and use it as removal, but I think here I'm going to be a little bit better off trying to get the conversion. So uh, my opponent has a fully charged card in their hand, and that, that's always a little bit concerning when you see that just because... Uh, it makes you think, oh, they've, they've probably got removal. And that's what I'm thinking here. I'm thinking that they've probably got removal. But even though they've probably got removal, I really don't have a way of baiting it out apart from playing my creatures. So at this stage, I'm kind of just hoping that uh, I'll be able to play them all uh, and, and get this rolling. So I get super lucky. I get my own Cascade uh, to counter my opponents. Uh, you'll see that I get my 10 tokens for 2020. And then my opponent's supposed to get 10 minus 1. Uh, so we'll see if my opponent gets it. Okay, so they do get the 10 minus one. I was just in a weird COVID haze. We're gonna chalk it up to that. Um, they reinforce, that's it. They reinforce with the, with the vehicle. But you'll see there, so I get the tokens. I steal them from my opponent. My opponent does not have removal. Uh, the vehicle turns them into an 80-80 and now I'm swinging for 80 haste. 
to the face. Uh, and that means that this is going to be game over because if your opponent does not respond to it in one turn, uh, then you're just going to be swinging at them for another 80. Uh, and that's a really quick and simple showcase of how to make this work. It's, it's quite strong, really fun. I would definitely suggest you try it out if you got the card. Uh, and please tell Gauss that his master was not good to him.